button. Now, now we're recording. Um, so for those of us who are trying to buy, sell, all the things that we do, it is marvelous because it's a one-stop shop for us. We'll talk about other ways to market as well, but we're going to start with Craigslist because it truly is the place I get my most success. Uh, all of you all have been to Greg's three-day event. You all got his uh, buyer's list thing where you put your dummy ad out on Craigslist. Mobile home buyers wanted, 0% interest on our financing. We've all, every single one of us that's on this call tonight have, have had that conversation. And I think every single one of you all have already built that and put it out there on Craigslist. Hopefully your phone has started ringing. If it hasn't, that is somewhat surprising to me uh ours ours started ringing immediately but that's no big deal if it doesn't just keep putting it out there every 48 hours put it out as many times as craigslist will allow and uh you'll, you will get results from this um how to post i am going to show you how to do that and we're going to walk through it a little bit um it's it's really it's it's not hard after you learn it and um, when you see where I've got three times per county and all of that, I'm going to show you what that means. Let me switch over and I've got it pulled up here. You're basically just going to go into your search engine and you're going to put in Craigslist. I put in, of course, Tampa Bay because that's where I live. Uh, but whatever area that you live in or that you want to post in, you don't have to post in the area that you live. You're going to, we're going to talk about that more when it comes time to sell our mobile homes or any of our properties. But especially since you are uh, trying to build a buyer's list in this area, you know, post in the area that you are familiar with. Uh, so just go into your search engine, put that information in there, and then click. Um, then we're going to go straight to post. Let me close this and close this. Uh, we're going to go straight to post to classifieds. And then every, and this is for this, that three posting three times is going to come in handy. I post three times. I post in four, I post, I'm sorry, let me get up here. Housing offered. I post in for sale by owner. And I post in community. And we're going to talk about that. So housing offered for sale by owner and community. And the only you can do pardon me. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I thought you had a question, Edith. How are you? Um, I'm great. Good. So uh, we're going to start at housing offered. And it just automatically takes you to the next page. Then we're going to go to real estate by owner. Now, for Tampa Bay, it's going to show me that I've got four counties that, that are in Tampa Bay area. Hernando, Hillsborough, Pasco, and Pinellas. I live in Pinellas, but I'm going to post in all four of them. I'm going to start with Pinellas just because I have no reason, no, no real reason about that. And then you enter your email address, and mine's already it will load for me. Now, you're going to say, it says users can also contact me by phone or by text. I want them to ring my phone off the hook. I don't care. I want my phone to ring. I want my text messages to light up. I want my email to ding. I want it all to happen. And then I'm going to put my cell phone number in here, which that's not my cell phone number, but we're going to, for all intents and purposes, we're going to pretend like it is right now. And I am going to fill out the rest of this. Now, for your posting title, some of you all have heard me say this already. Others of you haven't. For those of you who haven't, um, you want to make, you want to be really clever here. You want to be... You want to make your posting title stand out amongst all the other postings that's out there. And there's going to be hundreds of them on Craigslist, so make it pop. You know, you might want to put in symbols, or you might want to put, you know, it doesn't matter. Just whatever looks peachy to you, just throw it out there. Make it, make it stand out. And then be a little bit flirty, and I use the word flirty because it's just the one that seems like it gets everybody in there. Um... I think you just saw one where I posted before. It was an actual one I did. I'm waiting for you. I use that one a lot. I don't know why. I just do. But it can be anything. It can be, um, um, you know, come see me now or I don't know, anything that just sounds clever at the time. Um, the one you're waiting for. You know, something that wants them to open that that post and see what's going on. Because you may be posting in real estate for sale by owner, but I promise you, if somebody says something, I'm waiting for you, or 
um, something that's just kind of out there that that doesn't really apply to real estate, uh, and, and you know, keeping it clean, of course, it's going to generate some attention, and that's what we want is attention. Now, since I live in Clearwater, um, I may or may not leave the specific location Clearwater because if people are are searching the Clearwater ads, more than likely they're looking for a Clearwater property but if I'm posting something for sale and uh, like for example when I posted a mobile home that we had for sale in um, Seattle Washington or somewhere like that I might put the beach or paradise or something um, just because that particular field is another one that is is open to whatever you want to put in it the postal code field however has to have a zip code in it you can't you can't you know get away from that one so the next thing you're going to look at is posting body, and that's everything that you can talk about with your mobile home. Everything. Uh, you want to paint a picture. Uh, I think that we've done them before, like right now, uh, the 4th of July is coming up. So, you know, we're going to tell everything that we know about that mobile home. You know, two bed, uh, one bath, mobile. I'm going to say in a 50, because we have a lot of 55 plus communities here immunity you know and then I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tell all it is about it you know how much the lot rent is what the amenities are if it's got a swimming pool if it's got shuffleboard if it's got a clubhouse uh, what's included as far as uh, water electric not usually electric is not sometimes it is but mostly it's not whether it's trash lawn maintenance anything that's included in that lot rent besides amenities I'm gonna also post those here um, I'm going to talk about whether it's pet friendly and I'm going to really just, I'm going to give them all the details. If it's been rehabbed, I'm going to say recently rehabbed, fresh paint, new floors, um, beautiful cabinets. I'm going to, I'm going to paint a picture of what is going on in that mobile home or single family property or whatever you're selling, condo, whatever it is. I am going to paint a picture so that they can see it. But not only am I going to paint a picture, where they can kind of visualize it as they're reading it, I'm going to make them want them to be there. I'm going to talk about, uh, since the 4th of July is coming up, about having a barbecue in the backyard or having a barbecue uh, with your new friends. Um, I'm going to talk about watching the fireworks over the lake. I'm going to talk about if it's Christmas, smelling Christmas cookies, baking as you walk in the door to your new home. I am going to give them, I'm going to appeal to all their senses. And, you know, whenever you're looking at a, a place, if you're looking for something to live, sorry about that. I thought I had this. Oh, uh, I thought that was mine. Um, if you're looking for something, somewhere to live, you want to see uh, yourself living there. So that's one of those reasons that you paint a picture. You want that you're, whoever's going to be buying this property, you want them to see themselves there. If it's within walking distance of transportation and you know that they don't have transportation, you're going to say transportation, uh, you know, available, uh, you know, whether it's a bus line or whatever it is. Um, so paint a picture. Let them want to be there. You're going to provide pictures, but before they ever get to pictures, you want them to see it in their, your post. And you want them to really be intrigued by it. And what's going to make them open it there is this, I'm waiting for you or come see me or whatever it is. That's going to generate their attention. And then your post is what's going to, is what's going to pull them in. Uh, because, you know, I've, and I've said this to somebody, it may have been Edith. I've, I've said it to somebody before that, you know, they're going to read this, I'm waiting for you. And they're going to open it up, you know, thinking it's something provocative. Or probably, I don't know what they're going to think, but something provocative. And then when they open it up and they start reading it, they're going to realize they're homeless or their brother's homeless or somebody they know is homeless or somebody's moving. And they're going to say, oh, you know, I'm glad I stumbled upon this and I'll pass along that information. It's amazing at what things like that, those little trigger things will, will do for it. Then you're just going to come down here to the posting details and put in whatever the information it is that's asking for, your price, um, 
you know, when it's available, how many beds and baths. If you're having an open house, you can fill that in. Uh, what kind of home it is, you know, manufactured, wherever. If it's got uh, laundry, if it's got washer dryer hookups, if it's uh, washer dryer in the unit, if there's a, some, a laundromat on site, uh, if there's a car, you know, if there's a carport, a garage, whatever the parking situation is. And then you're going to slide your address into your maps. That's not mandatory. You know, it says it's optional. I do it because a lot of times people will drive by. Um, you know, they can call you to get you get all this information, but if it's already in there, they're going to do a drive by to see if they're interested or not. And a lot of times that will save you on the tire kickers because if they've already done a drive by before they call me, then or at least if the address is provided where they can before they call me, then I feel like if they want to look at it after they've seen it from the outside, that they are probably interested. Once you fill in all that information, just go to continue. If you put an address in, it's going to pop up a map so that people can kind of find it a little easier. And then you're going to post some images. Um, I think I've put some images out there for this. Let me see if I did or not. Anyway, just go to your thing. I thought I had one just for mobile homes. Just go pick some out and put them in there. And the very first one that you put in there is going to be the first one that is displayed upon everything that you, uh, on all of your ads. You know, and try to throw out as many pictures as you can, as you can of what the inside of it looks like. I mean, get the outside of it too, and kind of show the street that it's on or whatever, so that people can get an idea of whether it's, uh, you know, make sure that the the lawns are being taken care of and the, you know, everything looks very nice around it. Um, if you've rehabbed it, you know, take a picture of all the rooms, showing off everything that you've done to it. But put as many pictures as, as you can. It says a period will allow twenty four. So if you can get 24, more power to you. I usually do at least 10 or 12, but the more the merrier. Okay. I don't know why my email is just going crazy. Okay, and then once you do all of that, you're going to publish it. Now, you're not really published yet because you're going to have to go and into your email and, ex and click on the link that they send you. And I've got mine set up, I think, to do that. So see, here it is, Craigslist Automated. And then down here is the link. Once I click on that, and I, and I click on Accept the Terms of Use, and I'm not going to because I don't want to post it because it's just a dummy one. Uh, once you click on Accept the Terms of Use, then you can, um, it, it will post straight to Craigslist then. Okay. And what I'm actually going to do, if I can find it again, I don't know where it went to. But anyway, what I was going to say, what I was actually going to do was go to, um, uh, and, and forward it to my Gregory Downing one so I could show you how I can build some stuff around it. Let's see if it will let me do that. I don't think it's going to let me. Well, anyway, I can still show it. Um, let me get back in session here. Can everybody see my screen okay? Yes. Good. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So that's basically just how you post for your uh, mobile home buyers and everything like that. So, But you're going to post three times per county. And if you're doing a mobile home buyers wanted, if you are doing a for sale one, whatever you are doing, you're going to do it exactly the way I just told you. It's going to obviously everything that you do is going to be a little bit different. If it's a mobile home buyers wanted, you're going to put all the things that Greg had put in there about the zero percent interest and all of those things. But you're going to do it exactly the way that I just told you. Uh, it's, it never changes. Um, remember I told you that you could do it three times per county? Well, I will show you what I mean. Okay. All right. I, I told you I was going to do it uh, for sale by owner next. 
it's the very same thing. And then I go down here for sale to buy owner, and I'm going to go to, let me find it, general, if I can find it. Somebody help me out here. General for sale by owner. And I'm also going to do that one in Pinellas County. And the exact same thing. What I've done, though, is I'm going to copy and paste everything that I just did in that first one. When that email comes through about posting it, I'm just going to copy and paste that email. That's that posting, I mean. And I'm going to put it exactly in here. And that way I don't have to retype everything out. The only thing that you can't do on that is you have to have your pictures. Uh, you have to upload them every single time. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But otherwise, as far as any of the, the body or the posting title, you can copy and paste it. And that way you don't have to retype it. And then the another place I'm going to do it then in Pinellas County is I'm going to go to Community. And I'm going to put it in General Community. That's not the same as the one we just did. It's completely separate. And then for every single county, because I've done it three times in Pinellas, I've done for real estate for sale by owner, or I think it was housing offered and then real estate for sale by owner. And then it was general community, or general for sale by owner, I'm sorry. And then it was the general community. And I'm going to do that for Pas Pinellas, Pasco, Hillsboro, and Hernando. So when you're posting your ads, you know, uh, mobile home buyers wanted, 0% interest, um, you know, financing available, you know, good credit, poor credit, okay. Do it three times per county in your area. And that generates a lot more people seeing your ad being posted out there. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, yes. Thank you. All right. Let's go back. Don't yell at me. There we go. Okay, so three times per county. Then you're going to put your photos in correct order. That's not an absolute positive thing that you have to do, but for me, it's just so much easier to have my folder and my, my photos in my folder exactly how I want to post them because I can just click, click, click. I don't have to search. I'm just clicking and uploading, clicking and uploading because I've already taken the time to do that. It takes an extra five minutes, whereas if I'm having to search and click, it takes a little longer, and I just don't have time for that. And always remember that your very first photo that you post will be the one that, that they see, uh, like whenever the, the uh, when the ad goes on Craigslist, there'll be a photo, of, you know, something, a little tag there beside of it, and that will be the photo that is uh, shown with that. Um, copy and paste. We talked about that. Uh, build folders in your email. So you have to renew in Craigslist your ad every 48 hours. Uh, the, instead of having to go in and do that over and over and over and over and becoming time consuming, just build you um, a folder in your Craigslist, in your email, I mean, and name it Craigslist. Let's see. Uh, say, for example, here in uh, my email right here. I've got mobile home buyers wanted Hernando, Hillsboro, Pasco, and Pinellas. And that way every time I post it three times to Hernando, you know, whatever, then when I click on that and it shows me that email, I can just open that link to that email again and it will allow me to renew. It'll say renew, delete, edit, all those things. And if you just click on renew, it's a it's very it's very simple. You can renew all twelve of them. For my in my instance, you know, three four counties, three postings, twelve. I can renew them all within a matter of seconds, and it saves you an all Rhonda, time. Yes. Uh, how how much of a radius do you set up? I'm not really familiar with the Tampa area and, and Clearwater and that to know. I uh, go where the money is. So, okay. um, you know, if it, now, and, and I say that, let me, let me, let me back up a little bit for a mobile home. I'm not sure I would go clear to Hernando County. I might, if there's money to be made and I see the potential there and I know that it's not going to take forever and a day to get that thing rehabbed and turned. Yeah. I, I would drive to Hernando County or, you know, Hillsborough County easily. If I'm going to pick up a mobile home and make, you know, five grand on it, four grand on it in 30 days. Yeah, I'd drive for that. You know, 
I, I, it's basically I have to okay. read and see what the deal is about, you know. But once you build your buyers list and then you're starting to work on uh, matching mobile homes to the buyers. If I have somebody who, that I've posted a mobile home buyer wanted ad in Hernando County and somebody's contacted me about that mobile home, you know, and they want to buy and they want to stay in Hernando County, then, yeah, I might put some fillers out there. I'm going to be on Craigslist in Hernando County searching for mobile homes. And if I can find one that I can match up to that buyer, and whether I make a quick turn or I, you know, cash flow or whatever I do to it, uh, yeah, I would do that. Absolutely. You know, okay. I follow the money. But just build you a folder out, and like I said, you know, the mobile home buyer wanted, and then put the county down there, and then after you, you, you uh, click on the links to get those emails, uh, or I'm sorry, to get those postings uh, up, uh, uploaded, then just flip that posting uh, over to that folder and then in 48 hours put you a little trigger on your phone or uh, make, you know, set yourself a reminder and then in 48 hours just go in and renew those and it won't let you do it in you know 47 hours and 59 it won't let you do that it's 48 hours exactly I have tested a lot of these theories uh, you know I've been ghosted before because I've tried to post more than it, they will let me but you know somebody has to test the theory out and see if it works you know, and, and it's all, it's no big deal. The, you know, the Craigslist police will come down on me occasionally, but it's, you know, so far so good. All's going well. Okay. Let's go back. All right. So does everybody kind of understand how we post just getting started in there? I mean, if you don't, please stop me. I'm happy to go back over any of it. Okay, good. All is well. Okay. So you've done your posting. Uh, you've got your buyer's questionnaires out. Everybody's got those, I hope, by now. Um, remember to put the name and date on there. I've, I've mentioned to somebody recently that whenever I reconfigured that a little bit, I don't know I don't know what I was doing that day, but I forgot to have a name date thing on there. Just jot it down at the top so that you know whenever those calls come in who you're talking to and when it comes time to match them up to a seller or, or to another mobile home, wherever it happens to be, you've got a name to call them back. It's okay to call them back because you've got a phone number or whatever, but I always like to know what their name is so that it just makes it more personal, I guess. You know, and ask all the pertinent questions, you know, the name, date, beds, baths, how soon they need to move, uh, how much they're wanting to spend, because sometimes they're realistic, sometimes they're not. Um, it's really hard to get somebody who wants to spend $400 uh, all together into the mobile home that, you know, they want three bedrooms and th two baths and a jacuzzi and, you know, tennis courts. It's really kind of hard to work with that budget. But, you know, kind of take their information down so that you can um, play around with it a little bit. Because I know our lot rents here, you know, are, are going to be more than a lot of them are asking to spend. But that's just some of the information I disclose when I'm talking to them that a lot of times lot rents are more than that. You know, if we could get you into a home um, with with your payment and lot rent included and you own that home in three years, is that something that you'd be interested in? So just ask the pertinent questions. Um, are they wanting to rent? Are they Do they want to own? Um, are they employed? Are they married or single? Uh, I don't care if they're married or single. It doesn't matter to me. But it helps to know how many people are in that decision-making process. Because, you know, he may be looking for this and she may be looking for something totally different. And we, we kind of like to know who's going to win that. And then uh, do they have pets? Uh, that's very important because a lot of mobile home parks have breed restrictions, weight restrictions, and a number amount a number that they can have some some don't allow more than two some don't allow dogs but they allow cats i think lance and i weren't we in a park recently that had dogs on one side and cats on the other something like that so you just never know you know those are just questions that that you want to find out the answers to now how to shop this is back to craigslist um, and you, the very first thing you want to do is narrow your search field. Again, um, that's basically on your location. We talked about that a little bit. And you can go anywhere you want to in the United States. You can go to Canada. I just have to put in a different code there. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I, only time I ever post in like Canada or somewhere is if it's winter time and I've got something I need to move and I know that they are wanting to come to Florida. 
but it's it's a little little different to post in Canada than it is in the United States. Um, but you narrow your search down. Um, in the search field, let me get back to my Craigslist thing here. Let's come completely out. Um, I'm going to go to where, uh, when I go into Craigslist, I'm going to go to where it says real estate for sale. And I can do all of Tampa Bay. I just generally don't like to do that because it overwhelms me a little bit. I want to go to whatever county that the person is that's looking for a mobile home. And if I don't have anybody looking for a mobile home and I'm just looking for one to rehab or something, I'm going to start with my home county and then I'll branch out if I want to. So I've, I narrow it down by my location. Now, I want some of my mobile homes, you know, I want to narrow it down by motivated sellers. And I'm, excuse me, first thing, though, I, I guess I should say is most of these that's coming up that's real estate for sale. These are mostly single family homes. Some are mobile homes or condos or whatever, but many of them are single family homes. So I just want to, I just want to see mobile homes. And that brings me down. That reduces me a whole bunch. And I can go even further than that. I want to go mobile homes for sale by owner. And then that brings me down even further. Um, let's see here. Or I can do motivated seller. And that brings me some, you know, that brings me down even more. You can you can tweak it to bring it down and narrow down your search. You know, it doesn't give you as many options, but there are still options out there. I might go with divorced. Because they're usually, you know, a little motivated. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Didn't give me any in that time. Sometimes they come up, sometimes they don't. Distressed. And nothing came up on that one either. So, like I said, usually, you know, sometimes some will pop up, sometimes they won't, but you can play around with it and narrow it down as much as you want to. And then over here, you can, uh, if you're looking for a particular home for somebody that you know uh, they grew up in a specific neighborhood and mama still lives there and they want to live close to home, um, you know, you can put that you want them within five miles from whatever that zip code is. I always like the ones that have a picture with them. I, I just do. I want to see what I'm looking at before I get there. If I've got a price point, I'm, I'm trying to aim for if somebody's looking to uh, buy one and I know what their price point is, uh, I can put that in there. How many beds and baths they want. Um, all those things. It's got laundry. Whatever. Um, and then I just start clicking. Uh, this is how I shop. You know, I just start clicking down through here. Now this one that says 62.9, I have no idea. I have no idea. I, mean, I just want to see it. Um, I just want to see what it says. Uh, Paradise Island, that's probably why. Um, it's a little more upscale neighborhood, but I I don't shop there um, because that's not, for my, that's not what I'm looking for. But I'm going to start going down through here to see what prices look like. Uh, some of them I wouldn't even know. This one I clicked on today because I was searching for uh, homes today that we could talk about tonight. So I did click on this one today. I went and um, see it's got the photos that we talked about. And so I'm going to click through here and I'm going to see what it looks like on the inside. Um, doesn't look bad from the photos. Just because the photos don't look bad doesn't mean these photos might have been taken 10 years ago. I don't know. I'm definitely going to go look at it. If you know, I'm not going to, but if I was, you know, see, it says shows a brand new uh, stove range here. That may be accurate. It may be ten years ago. I don't know. You know it looks like new carpet. I don't know. But anyway, when you scroll down through here, and it says it's available July first. Um, it says one uh, one bed, one bath, double wide. Double wide is always nice. Uh, this is an all ages park, which is is really a cool thing if we can find that in Pinellas County, Florida, because the majority of our mobile home parks are 55 plus. Um, so it's actually, it's kind of cool that this one's all ages. 
Might be one I go look at. I don't know. Uh, anyway, and it tells you all the, the features. Remember I told you to, to paint a picture? Well, they, they've done a nice job telling me stuff about it. I would have put more detail in it, but they're not me, and that's okay. Um, but it's telling you, you know, about how many rooms it's got. Uh, it tells you that it comes with a, a refrigerator, a stove. It's got a double closet and a bathroom in the master bedroom. Hmm, I wonder if that's the only bathroom it's got. One bed, one bath. I guess you have to, if you if you got visitors, they have to go through your bedroom to go potty. Um, then it's got a Florida room. Um, it's conveniently, see, I talk, it, they, they've got this conveniently located near grocery shopping, public transportation into the beach. They, they, they tell you how much the lot rent is and that the, the lot rent, uh, I'm guessing, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know this, but I'm assuming that you pay all the utilities and electric and besides the lot rent. It doesn't tell me what the lot rent actually includes. Uh, they want $4,500 or best offer. Um, they tell me that the new owner must be approved with the park management. That's an important thing to also put in your postings. That, you know, the park requires a um, background and credit check. And if you know how much those are, it's nice to put that in there. Because usually I pay around fifty dollars. I think uh, recently Lance had to pay a hundred, but it's, it's nice to let somebody know up front how much they can expect to pay. Um, another thing, you know, and I always try to put if there's a lot of activities, uh, if there's shuffleboard, if there's a clubhouse, if there's uh, some of them we've been to offer little clubs, you know. For me, they, they, they offer clubs by state. You know, for me, it would be the Kentucky Club or the Michigan Club or the, you know, the Seattle Club, whatever it is. Some of them offer clubs by state, a sewing club, a golf club. There's all kinds of them out there. This one doesn't seem to offer any of those things. But if you know that they do, put those in there. And then I'll say for you social butterflies, you know, there's all these wonderful activities that go on. And if you don't want to interact, you know, if you're more of a quiet stay at home person, I'll put, you know, you can also be close to all the excitement yet, you know, go home where you have some peace and quiet. It's about painting that picture. But they've done a you know, decent job putting out there, you know, the what's in there and what it offers and how much the lot rent is. And they've done a decent job. I would do a little, but that's because I do this all the time. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay. Do you put the square footage in? If I know it, yes. I usually don't. Numbers are not my thing. But if I know what it is, then yes, I do. And I always, 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 and I'm so glad you brought that up because it triggered something else for me that I had not put in here. Uh, I always, always, always put that it has a clean title. Because clearly if we've bought it, we've bought it with a clean title and that's really really important because when we post the people that we're posting to don't know that we're investors they don't know who we are uh, but you know I always post you know mobile home you know it comes with a clean title it's moving ready or if, if it's available immediately even if I've just bought it yesterday and it needs three thousand dollars worth of work I'm still going to market it and I won't put move in ready. I mean, somebody might want to move in right away, but I'm not going to put it out there in my ad. Um, and, uh, you know, I might be able to turn it and make a, you know, an easy $500. You never know. I might not, but it's always worth I start marketing the day that ink is, goes on the contract, regardless of whether it's, regardless of whether it's move in ready or not. I market the second the ink gets dry. And sometimes the ink's not dry. Okay. So exactly the things that you're going to post in your ad that you're going to try to lure a buyer in, that's exactly what you are looking for when you are shopping to buy. Okay, because it's important information. Even if you don't have a buyer at that moment and you just have somebody that you think might, whatever, I buy some, I used to have just the buyer's list and I would match it up to my seller's list and I still do that. Um, but if I see a good deal, then it's not, you know, unheard of for me to go ahead and act on that deal because especially this time of the year, because by the time I do a couple of mobile homes and I get them fixed up if they need a lot of work, well, that's going to put me in a couple months. And then the snowbirds are going to start looking uh, for their homes for the winter here very soon. Even though it's middle of summer, they're going to be thinking of the cold weather coming. You know, after 4th of July, people get really antsy up north. That's just my, you know. Okay.
And then this was just a sample, and that I, I've since I've already shown you one. I, we're not going to go really into detail. This when I started building this out, I just put this in here because I wanted to be able to show everybody what to look for. This particular sample that I'm showing you, when I clicked on it, it did not have any photos, which is a I don't I, I never I hardly ever do anything if I don't have photos because I want to see. It's kind of like a tire kicking thing for me. Uh, and then this one the. Most of the information, though, the pertinent information was in there. It had the lot rent. It has the fact that there's a laundry on site uh, that's now available, uh, that there's shopping and things close by. So this one had a lot, like bus line immediately in front of the park. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it had a lot of the uh, information on there. Um, so the next ones I'm going to show you um, – are some that, that were just looked at today. Uh, Lance, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to throw these out there. I, I saved these show tonight specifically because we were having this class tonight. Uh, Lance, uh, congratulations to him. He he closed on his first deal last week. Um, he's, he's, All right, where'd he go? I know. He's, congratulations. He, congratulations. Yeah, he, he did a good job, and he's, he's still on it hot and heavy. Um, so today he went and looked at a mobile home park. Uh, that has several homes that the, the the park wants to dump because they are new owners, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I hope I'm, this is correct information. Um, talked about several, but they are uh, have some empty homes in their park that they want to get fixed and turned. Um, they it costs too much to move them, and they just need to they need to get the part of the lot rent coming in. So these are some homes that he went and looked at today. Uh, this one says $500 or best offer. Uh, these are fixer uppers. Um, some, you know, sometimes you can get them for free. I'm going to bank on some fact, the fact that we can get some of these for free. Um, but so, you know, and these are all um, owned by the park. These are not for sale by owners. Well, I guess they are, but they're not people living in them. The park owns them. Uh, this one, um, same park. It says it's got new carpet, new refrigerator, large lanai, extra storage. Uh, see what this right here is so important to me? Investors welcome. Those are two words that I live by. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be investors welcome. We'll make it work. But I really like to see those two words. And he's made his notes on them because he went by to look at them and he made his notes. No central AC or washer dryer hookups. Um, Pretty sure there's probably uh, some kind of laundry something going on there. I don't know for a fact. I've not been to this park. Probably will go tomorrow. But, um, you know, we'll see. Here's a third one. This is another handyman special, 500 or best offer. Um, I think if I'm right, Lance, a couple of these kind of gave you a run for your money. They scared you a little bit. Oh, yeah, they were scary. <laughs> we see that a lot. Um Another one that looks like it says it's on the corner lot, post amenities, Florida room, extra storage, no central AC, the roof leaks in this one, no washer dryer hookups, and there's another handyman special. So if we add those up, we've got what, 500, 1100, 500, 1100, 22, 32. So 3700 I would almost put money on this, and I swear I don't know the answer to it, but I do know park managers. I'll bet if somebody went in there with a firm cash offer of $1,500, they could pick up all five of them. Bet you on it. Um, I'm going to try that probably. <laughs> we'll see. Um, and then you've got five mobile homes. I think Lance did some checking today, and they agreed to lower the lot rent uh, to $99 a month for three months. Um, yeah, so it, that helps out a whole lot because guess what? In three months, if you had five mobile homes ready to turn uh, within that period of time, and it's time for the snowbirds to come back, you know, it, it, you're going to make money all day long. Even if you quick turn them and just make it, look, we, Lance and I talked about this some today and we just, I, I was guessing high because I'm guessing sight unseen. And I was guessing, let's say we had $5,000 in the ones that says handyman special. 
And I, I only guessed $5,000 because I've been in handyman specials before. And sometimes it costs that. Sometimes it doesn't. But if you're looking at replacing the roof and having to put in subflooring and whatever, those are not things I can do by myself. So I'm going to have to hire somebody to do that. So I would just guess $5,000 on the high end because I'd rather guess high and be wrong than to guess low and be wrong. So, you know, you're still going to make money. And if you if you quick turn them, if you lease option them for three years, you're going to be able to double your investment in three years. You know, and not all of them are going to need $5,000. But I'm guess I always guess high. I'm going to go, you know, check out the scope it out probably tomorrow sometime. Um, even if you had them and had other investors who were interested and you just flipped them to other investors, you know, um, you might make a few dollars, you know, a couple hundred dollars here or there. And, you know, all you've done is sign the paperwork on it. Um, but it's definitely worth looking into. But those are the things that we just, that these were, these are brand new as of today photos. And don't forget, once we pick them up, we start marketing. I don't care if this handyman special up here, the roof is falling in. I don't care. I'm going to start marketing it either way. Because somebody may come in and that, that, that wants it and they give me a couple hundred dollars because they just want to live there and they're going to fix it up the way they want to. They might not, but I, you know, I'll start marketing it regardless. Okay. And once you start um, looking at all these places, you've been on Craigslist, you've looked to see what they've got out there, you've clicked on some links, you see some items that, that, that intrigue you, or you've been by the mobile home park and you've gotten to look at some of the mobile homes out there that the park has available or whatever, then you're going to pull your seller's questionnaire out and you're going to start asking some questions of them. You're going to want to know why are they selling? In this case, the ones that we just saw, we know that they are park owned and the park wants to get them turned so they can start collecting lot rent. But whatever the reasons are, drop down the answers. When are they looking to sell? These are what they want these to go right away. Somebody might be living there and they want to move within the month, whatever the reasons are. How much do they want for it? Because that's going to know how much we're going to offer. Remember Greg said in training, if, you, if you're not embarrassed by your offer, then you've offered too much. That's the case. Um, what are the property details? Can you, do they know what year it was built? Do they know all of the pertinent information? You know, if there's been any, um, anything new added to it, you know, have they put in a, you know, new water heater, anything like that? Just get as many details. A lot of times, once you ask them a couple of questions, they start talking and they will tell you everything you want to know and, you know, and then some, and you've only asked, asked a question or two. You know, just, just pay attention to what they're talking about. Ask if there are any liens, because that's important for us. Uh, we want a clear title when we buy. If there's a lien on it, that lien needs to be, you know, take, you know, it needs to be satisfied before we buy it. What is the lot rent, and what does that lot rent include? Uh, what are the amenities? Um, you know, does it have a, a shuffleboard court, which is obviously a big deal here? Um, does it have a pool? Does it have whatever? Does it allow pets? Does it whatever? Uh, and if there's any back lot rent, you want to ask not only the seller if it's somebody that's for sale by owner. You also want to ask the park manager or the park owner. Sellers will tell you all day long, most of them, not all of them, most of them will tell you all day long that the lot rent is paid up to date. And then you go to close and then guess what? They've not paid lot rent for six months. Well, that's no good. Uh, that happened to somebody I know. Uh, and they didn't, they, they took the seller's word for it. And they did not do their due diligence and ask the park manager, even though I said over and over and over and over again, be sure to ask the park manager about back lot rent. They thought that the seller was telling them the truth and they were wrong. So they bought the park, or I'm sorry, bought the, the home from the seller, gave them the cash or check, whatever they paid for it, and went to the park manager um, and then found out, guess what? They owed back lot rent, so not they they lost money on that deal. But they just didn't do they just didn't do their due diligence is all. So make sure you ask that question of the park manager. Okay, any questions? Okay. Now, 
We've talked about this already, and I, what I did, I got my slide all confused a little bit. I, I meant to slide this slide up earlier, and I just forgot, but we're going to go over it again just real fast. Generate your attention. Remember to put that uh, posting subject area out there to generate the attention. Give the asterisks or the, the whatever, you know, the dollar sign, the exclamation point, whatever you want to throw out there in front of it, and to uh, be very creative. You know, I'm waiting for you, or come see me, or um, I'm the one you want, something. Um, be descriptive. We talked about painting a picture and including all the details of that mobile home. Be honest. If it has issues, if it's got termites, say you know, if you hopefully you've had it tinted or had some kind of termite something done. It's Florida. Here it is. I mean, where I am, um, you know, bugs happen. But I, you know, I usually try to get somebody to come in and take care of that. But if you know it's got a termite or two floating around, then let them know so that they know. If you know that the neighbor next door has got issues, that may not be something I include because I can't control what the neighbor does. But I can talk about what I know to be factual about this home. You know, if it doesn't have something that they're asking for, let them know. Because not only is that just ethical and the right thing to do, but it also helps you eliminate those tire kickers. Because sometimes people just, you know, they see it and they're like, oh, I'll just check it out. And if they know before you, they, they come out um, that it doesn't have something that they're looking for, then it, it, it saves everybody a lot of time. Create the excitement. Again, that's all about being descriptive. That's all about, you know, telling them about all the good things that's going on, all the amenities, all of the, the activities, all of the stuff that's around at the beach, the restaurants, the um, you know, whatever it happens to be, wherever you live, uh, and you know what's popular and what attracts people, um, you know, include those things if you can. Lots and lots and lots of good photos. They don't necessarily need to see, uh, you know, 10 pictures of every single room. Just a couple of really good pictures of each room would be nice. If it's got something that you want to showcase because the, the bathroom is just really, really nice. Or the kitchen, bathrooms and kitchens are, are big selling points. Um, so if you can get a lot of really nice pictures, of, if you've upgraded the the light fixtures and made something like a really nice pretty thing in the kitchen that, that showcases something, you know, make a picture of that. If you've put in new cabinets, make a picture of that. You know, something that just really that shows it off. Uh, a call to action. You know, this one, this, uh, this one won't last, or uh, won't last long. Come and get it. Um, Whatever, something that makes them have to want to pick up the phone and call you, you know, we'll, we'll sell fast, you know, generate some attention and, and a call to action at the end. And the really important here is answer the phone. Um, you know, if the phone rings and you've got a Craigslist posting out there for uh, uh, something that you're trying to sell or you're trying to generate buyers or whatever, answer your phone. You know, my phone rings an awful lot. Uh, sometimes it's not a good time, but that's okay. If I know somebody needs me, I'm going to answer my phone. If I'm not on the, if I'm on the other line that flips the voicemail, I check my voicemail and, and, and call back as soon as I get the second to do it. Um, because that makes people trust you. And re just remember the posting rules. <laughs> Again, I've been ghosted before. Uh, so just be real cautious about how many times you post three times per area. will you'll be fine. Or I've always been fine. Let me put it that way. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Now, we've talked about Craigslist. Does anybody have any questions at all about Craigslist? I tried to cover it as much in depth as I could think of. Any questions at all? Oh, yay. All right. So let's move beyond Craigslist. Some of you, I don't know if everybody does or not, but some of you I know have REI Black Book. I use REI Black Book all the time. Uh, that's where my websites are generated. Uh, I build my marketing campaigns in REI Black Book. I have my AMP system set up there. Uh, We're going to talk more about REI Black Book later. I think Damon is actually going to do a webinar for us uh, on REI Black Book, which is amazing because it's going to come straight from the horse's mouth, and he's amazing. Um, so. Yeah, uh, 
I use Ariane Black Book to market all the time. I build my flyers on that to take them to RIA and everything. So um, that's if you've got it, it's it's really a good tool. Uh, it's not the only tool out there. It's just a really good one, though. Uh, YouTube. Um, one of the things that I always do when I am selling a home is I go through and make a video. Usually I use my phone uh, or camera or whatever, but I usually use my phone. And I make a video of all of the improvements and everything. Or, you know, I just go through room by room and I talk about it. I'll start out with, like, for example, uh, this is 1500 Elmwood. Um, and I walk in the door, you know, you know, we walk in, here's our living room. I go to the kitchen. I talk about it while I'm, while I'm filming it. And then I come in and I upload that video to YouTube and I put the address that's associated with that home. And then I start advertising that YouTube video on Craigslist. I'll throw out there, you know, come, you know, watch my, and when I'm doing my ad on Craigslist, I will put in there, watch my video at YouTube. And then I, you know, I'll give the, you know, Craigslist is really picky about adding links. They do not like that at all. They frown on that. But you can say, you know, watch my YouTube video and then kind of give some details to get them there. Okay. You just can't link it up at all. Um, also, on uh, you can also do that on Facebook or anything. Uh, just put a, a link to your or uh, uh, directions to your YouTube video and get people at, you know, to watch it. This is YouTube generation. And everybody likes to see things on YouTube, and they will watch it. I promise. Uh, another thing for YouTube, for those of you who are haven't done it already, or if you're good or hadn't thought of it or whatever, if you will have somebody and you can get it yourself, uh, do a, like a little introductory video. You know, hey, my name is Rhonda. I am a local investor in this community. I serve, uh, you know, Pinellas, Pasco, whatever the county is. Uh, I would love to be able to work with you to meet, you know, your buying and selling needs, whatever, whatever you're you know, you want to generate attention to, do a really short little video, maybe a minute, minute and a half, upload that to YouTube and put your uh, investor, like whatever your your company name or whatever it is, and put welcome beside of it. Especially when you do your website, you can upload it to that and it helps people put a face and name together. And like I said, this is a YouTube generation. Um, it, it's astonishing to me how much stuff you can find on YouTube. If you don't know what you're doing, if you put into YouTube, there's a video out there that will show you how every single time. So uh, that's another really good way, though, to advertise your mobile homes is to make a video or any of your homes. I'm, I'm just stuck on mobile homes because that's that's my that's my niche. But um, put it on YouTube and and, and uh, put a video to it. Uh, Facebook, join Facebook groups. I belong to a whole bunch of Facebook groups. Um, I know here in uh, my area, there's a Pinellas County buy, sell, trade, giveaway, all that type of thing. I belong to that. Um, I, I belong to a lot of RIA Facebook groups, um, uh, investor Facebook groups. There's a ton and ton and ton of Facebook groups out there that you can be a part of uh, that, that work with your real estate uh, investment needs. Just ask to join them. Some of them you can just join them and others you have to ask, but I've never been turned down before. Um, and then you can post your um, your uh, ads and everything of your homes that you're trying to sell. Or if you're looking for something in particular, a uh, particular home or whatever, you can post that on those groups as well. And those are like-minded people. So it should generate some attention. If you don't have a Facebook page built for your, web, for your uh, business, please do so. Um, because that's another good way to generate attention. Everybody's on Facebook, it seems like. Instagram, same theory as Facebook, very same theory. Uh, LinkedIn is more of a business or professional group. You can also join as many real estate investments. There's all, you know, there's tons of, of things that you can follow on LinkedIn or join in LinkedIn that will help with your business. Um, you know, also in kind of a, um, like the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, those types of things that's out there um, that just helps with your business purposes. But you can also post uh, things that you are searching for or ads and things like that on LinkedIn. Twitter, if you tweet, you all, you know, if you can do it in what, 40 so many words or whatever it is. I don't do a lot of tweeting. I, I have before, but it's just I talk a lot. So it's not a doesn't give me a lot of leeway. It's frustrating. So, but if you tweet, that's another big generational thing that, that they like to do. 
Um, if you haven't joined a RIA group, I strongly, strongly advise you to do so. Uh, they are fantastic networking. It's it's amazing at the things that you can find out in RIA. You've not minded people. Uh, you can meet people who do everything and anything that, you know, you can find nine contractors there. If you haven't started building a power team or even if you have, uh, going to a RIA meeting and, and talking to people, a lot of business cards get exchanged. A lot of handshakes happen um, and you can find a lot of team members there. Uh, take flyers with you if you've got things that you're trying to sell. I told you I go into REI Black Book, I build my flyers for whatever I'm selling, then I take those flyers and uh, distribute them at my RIA group. Um, there's always, for every RIA group I've ever been to, there's a haves and needs portion of that group where you can stand up and talk about what you have you know i've got a two-bedroom one-bath mobile home and a uh you know family-friendly community da, 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 da. this is what i'm asking for it this is what the lot rent covers and that's a have that's what you've got and that's letting other people in that group know you've got this if you want it or you know somebody who does see me uh, and then there's a need section where you say i need a general contractor or i need a plumber because I've got a home that I am rehabbing and it needs a new shower. I don't know. Whatever it is that you need, you can also put that out in your RIA group. And there might be a plumber or something. There's probably going to be a plumber or a contractor or somebody there that's going to hook you up. So RIA groups are fantastic. Bulletin boards, laundromats. Uh, if, uh, they're really, really, really good places to share information about your mobile homes that you're trying to sell. Uh, I don't know why, but they really, really are. Um, but go into your uh, laundromats locally and put in uh, flyers on your bulletin boards. Another really good place uh, is like um, apartment complexes. If you can leave some laying around strategically in apartment complexes that you've got mobile homes. Um, sometimes people want to buy a mobile home that they can you know, pay for in three years and it be theirs as opposed to paying rent for the rest of their lives. Uh, you can get those little um, index cards, you know, that, that you can have printed, you know, why rent when you can buy. Try doing that and putting those out in apartment complexes and places like that. And then, of course, bandit signs. Uh, bandit signs um, are called bandit signs because they're not supposed to be out there. That's why they're called bandit signs. And you see a lot of them appear. Now, here, I see them all the time. I, I mean, I see the same ones. And I know that nobody's been by to pick them up in months. But they're supposedly, uh, I guess, in places that are a little more you know, picky about it. Uh, people would run out and put them out on Fridays because they knew the city workers weren't going to pick them up on the weekends. So they would put them out Friday afternoon. And then by Monday, you know, the city would come and take them all down. Now that doesn't happen where I live. I mean, it might happen occasionally that somebody will put one out and, you know, three years later it, it, it comes up missing because they've picked them up. But it's rare. I see them the same ones over and over and over all the time here. Okay. Okay, why am I not going any further? Ah, that's why. Mm, did I get all those? I did get all those. Okay. So the best times to post. We're going to do, we'll get through this rest of this real fast. Um, I just want to give you some ideas because it, a lot of things are out on Craigslist. I don't know where you live, but uh, I know here it's it's somebody something's on Craigslist posting all the time. Um, if you're in a larger market. Uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays are the best times between 10 and 11 a.m. That's going to cover most of us, I think, in, the, in our group. Uh, if you're in a smaller market, uh, Monday through Friday from 10 to 8 in 30 to 60 minute intervals. That keeps you at the top of your, of your thing all the time. That keeps you, and people are going to notice you all the time. Uh, but for those of us, and most of us, I think, are in the larger markets, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday between 10 and 11 for Craigslist. Facebook, um, three o'clock on Wednesdays, and I didn't make these numbers up. These are these are numbers that I, I knew about them, and I had a class on all of this, and that's how I found out about them. And I always go and check to see if the numbers have changed and what the net latest updates and everything are. So I did. I have done these recently to make sure that that I'm telling you accurate times. But on Facebook, they say three o'clock p.m. on Wednesdays is the best time to post. Don't know why. 12 to 1 on Saturdays and Sundays. 
and one to four on Thursdays and Fridays. And I wrote them down in the exact order that they were down um, when I looked them up. Three on Wednesdays, 12 to one on Saturdays and Sundays, and one to four on Thursdays and Fridays. And tweet, if you want to tweet your advertisements out, anything, post anything out there, 12 to three, 12 between the hours of 12 and 3 p.m. and at 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Instagram, Monday through Thursday is the best time to post. Any time except between 3 and 4. I have no idea why. And LinkedIn, uh, the optimal time to post on LinkedIn is midweek between 5 and 6 and on Tuesday between 10 and 11 a.m. 5 and 6 p.m. and 10 and 11 a.m. And 7.30, 8.30 a.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and also at 12 p.m. And again, these numbers, I, they're out there for a reason. I don't question them. I just, I just go with the flow. I believe what they say, and I do what they try, what they tell me to do. And one of the last things I want to talk about, uh, if you don't know about if this, then that, uh, this is a neat little uh, app that helps you a whole lot because uh, all these postings, if you're posting to Facebook and then you have to turn around and do it to Instagram and then you have to turn around and do it to LinkedIn, it runs into a lot of time and you don't have a lot of time. You, a lot of you all still have job jobs, uh, trying to invest, maybe in school, you may still be in trainings, whatever, and time is not on your side. Well, if this, then that is a handy little tool that will help you condense some of that. Uh, it allows you to create recipes, and that's what they are called, or recipes, and it makes your posting really seamless. For example, I can build a recipe that says, if I post to Facebook, then I want you to post that same thing to Twitter, and then you can do the same. If I post, if it posts to Twitter, then it's going to go to Instagram. Uh, looks like I spelled that wrong. If I post to Instagram, then you know. But you can build the recipes however you want. And I actually pulled that up so you could see what it looks like. These are just some of my recipes. Some of them I've got turned on. Some I don't. But it shows if I posted to Facebook, then I want to go to Twitter. Um, this is a call log that I started. Um, looks like in September of last year. Um, but you can just browse and it gives you some suggestions of um, different recipes that you can do. You know, mute, mute your phone at bedtime. It's pretty cool. It's all kinds of neat stuff you can do on this. It says automatically post your tweets on Facebook when you include a specific hashtag. Um, and there's there's hundreds of them. It's astonishing to me at how many recipes you can build. But play around with it. I am not an expert at it, but I've played around with it. Um, and it works. It absolutely works. You know, and like I said, it's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them out here. So play around with it and see how you like it. It's definitely well, is a time saver. I promise you that. Okay. And uh, that leaves us with uh, Q&A. Does anybody have any questions that you want to run by me about uh, marketing? And everybody's turned on. If you have any, you can let me know. Okay. No? Alrighty then. If you haven't already contacted me to set up a coaching call, whether it's your second, third, or whatever, and I know somebody, I think a couple of y'all have mentors coming out, so that we'll wait after your mentors have left because you've got a full plate. Uh, but if you need anything, you know you've got my number. Everybody's got it. You've got my email address. Um, you've got access to block time on my, my uh, calendar. And if you don't like we're using that, let me know. We can work it out another way. Uh, that just lets you know when I am available. Um, but yeah, let me know because I want to help you. I want to help you make money. I want you to see that this really is a, a positive step that you're making. And let's let's help you make you some money. 90 days is going to come and go. And I want to see everybody have money in the bank before that time is up. Um, and this is a little quote I just want to leave you with. Entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people won't. So you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. 
Uh, and I don't know who Warren G. Tracy is, but one of their students said that. And I think it's absolutely accurate. Um, you know, we are we 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 start out with so much going on. We're we're motivated, but we're overwhelmed. Um, and we try to figure out how it's all going to come together and how we can make it work for us. And it's very, very difficult sometimes to see the big picture. So we work and we work and we work, whether it's, you know, building a buyer's list, whether it's finding those those homes, starting out with mobile homes or starting out with something small uh, that get us going so that for every single thing that we do, if we do with a mobile home, um, we are going to learn things working on that mobile home that's going to help us on bigger projects because it's a lot easier to rehab something with a smaller investment tied into it and learn lessons on those. And then take those lessons and apply them to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and get bigger and bigger and bigger. So, yeah, we do a lot of work starting out. We are doing marketing starting out, uh, but we're trying to learn how to automate that as much as we can. So don't get discouraged. Uh, if you've got if you need somebody to talk you through it, call me. I've been there. Call me. We'll talk about it. But this is a very important thing I want you to take away, though. Entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people want so that you can live, spend the rest of your life like most people can't because it will pay off. And you'll look back on these years someday and you'll be like, oh, thank God, you know. All right. Uh, if anybody has any questions, anything that you want to talk about, I am open to discussing it. Uh, otherwise, I look forward to hearing from all of you with your next coaching call or anything else that you need to talk about. And if you don't need anything from me, I wish all of you all a good night. Hey, Rhonda. Yes. Hey, can you in the chat, Chris asked a question about the seller question or the buyer questionnaire. Okay. Um, Thank you for that. Comes up. I'm very sorry. If you're to me, I don't have the chat box uh, on my screen. Okay. So if you'll ask me, I'm happy to answer it. I'm sorry I didn't see it. It was the question was, wouldn't it be better to ask them how many adults rather than the marital status when you're talking to a, a potential buyer? Yes, you can do that. Um, sometimes, though, and, and what you're saying is absolutely correct because it's a, a really good way of, instead of, you know, offending anyone, uh, if they've got a life partner or whatever, uh, as long as they realize that, that you're not just implying 18 and over. Because if my 25 year old is moving uh, into a home that I am buying, I'm not going to take their needs into consideration. Unless, you know, I've got special needs or something like that, obviously I'm going to. But if they're just living with me because they don't have anywhere else to go, I'm not going to worry about what, they're not going to be part of my decision-making process. If mm -hmm. it's an adult that's going to be part of the decision-making process, then absolutely. If it's a life partner or, or, you know, whatever, whatever the reason is. But, yes, you can sure, sure do that. Got it. Anything else that I've missed? Looks good from my angle. Okay. Thanks for the great tips. All right. Well, I hope everybody took home something from it. And if there's anything that you need or any questions that you just think of later, uh, you all have my email address or whatever. Shoot me an email and I'll send you the answers. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Rhonda. Okay. You're welcome. You all have a good week. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have your hand up. Steve, are you still there? I just said that you had. Uh, yes. I, I'm sorry. I had hit my screen so small. I'm trying to. Okay, that's fine. Get I just mic and turn it back on, but yeah. Oh, since I do have you though, um, the calendar. Uh -huh. Is that in Entrepreneur Zone or or just send you an email? Uh, it is. Uh, for your scheduling. Yeah, it's meetme.so. I have to look. Hang on a second. I'll tell you exactly what it is. I just have to find it myself. I don't, I never use, you know, I never go to that piece of it. So I have to think. I know it's meet me at something, something dot. I don't know. Hang on a second. I'll tell you. It's meetme, M E E T M E dot S O. Slash Rhonda S. 
Okay. The uh, other one we had the other day where we scheduled the appointment, you probably use that link? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and I will be with Tony Ray all day on Friday. Um, uh, so if anybody has any questions, I won't be on, you won't be able to schedule time with me on Friday or Saturday. I'm with her all day on Friday, and I've got some moving to do on Saturday. But if you need me on Friday, you can still call me. Uh, I'm definitely accessible by phone. It's just that she and I have a meeting on Friday, and we are working on some software on Friday. So I won't be on this. Uh, you won't be able to block time with me, but you can definitely call me. Okay, very good. Thank okay. you. You're welcome, and I will talk to you all very soon. Thanks so much for attending. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>